Welcome to Oi Now. It's Amy Tierman, the blogger of the Dragon's Den, and one of the hosts of Between Tierminas here on Owen TV. Of course, it is snowing as we speak. Of course, a little surprise, west side of the state's under a um, winter storm warning up for um, areas west of Lansing. But, you know, but we're supposed to expect some snow here um, coming up, so um, stay safe on the roads. And um, we'll talk some OA. Um, we got boys basketball tryouts happening around the OA. Um, some interesting news out of Pontiac, of course, with Ben Kelso now becoming the new head coach. We'll go over that in the third segment along with the rest of the boys' basketball previews. But we're going to go with first, we're going to go with football. Of course, um, we got three OA teams still in. You got Harrison, Clarkston, and Southfield all still in. Of course, um, when you look at these three teams, I mean, like, they took some very interesting paths to get to the state semifinals. Um, Harrison, of course, went through um, Fenton in the first round, went over there, beat them. They lost the quarterback, Javon Shaw, for the year in that. And they went and beat them, Wall Lake Western, on a defensive stand, uh, on a block PAT, and a, um, and a winning um, field goal. Not a winning PAT, correction. And then they just went and stormed past Flushing last week. Um, it was an ugly game for Harrison, but um, still, they're here. They're still there. They're... Um, Going to play Muskegon Mona Shores on Saturday at um, Howell, which is a interesting matchup right there. It's a tough match for Harrison going up against Muskegon Mona Shores. When you look at the Hawks, um, when you look at Harrison, I mean, like the um, how they've been doing it. You know, their defense has been stellar. They've been fantastic. Um, you got to give John Harrington a lot of credit, and you also got to give a lot of the players over there at Harrison a lot of credit for what they've done. In the past um, couple weeks, I mean, like having to deal with the adversity of not having their leader, their starting quarterback, and Javon Shaw, you know. But um, but this is a different animal that they're going up against with Muskegon Mona Shores. I mean, like Muskegon Mona Shores, of course, they beat Caledonia in the pre district, and they went through Midland Dow, and then they beat Battle Creek Lakeview pretty handily. And get to this matchup, um. I think when you look at it, it's a bad matchup for them. Um, if the key for Harrison, that one's going to be pure athleticism. If they can handle the athleticism in that one, you know, Harrison, it would not surprise them they get to state finals back in 2010. But it's but it's going to be a tough matchup, I think, for Harrison. Looking at the game with Mona Shores, Mona Shores is a very, very good team. Of course, they play in the same league as Muskegon, the Ottawa-Kent Black Division, which is, um, which is my God, one of the toughest leagues in the state. You got... Muskegon Mona Shores in there. You got also got Muskegon in there. You got to deal with Lowell every. You got to deal with Lowell in there. You know, I mean it's t it's a tough chore to play in that division, no doubt. Um, when you look at it, it's a top match for Harrison right there early on in that one. The other game here, we're, other two games we're going to mention, of course we're going to mention of course in Division Two is going to be Southfield, the Blue Jays. You know Southfield, of course, um, they had a tough loss, emotional loss to West Bloomfield Week One. And here they are. They went into Detroit, Martin Luther King, just absolutely destroyed the Crusaders. And then they just went and beat, they had a very emotional win at Oak Park, which is, a, um, that's not an easy place to play. And, you know, that's a rivalry game right there when, you, when, they, when they beat Oak Park there. And then, of course, last week they had the complete destruction of Wyandotte Roosevelt, 35-7. I mean, you know, that was a game, I, I mean, like, that didn't surprise me at all because you had Southfield's um, secondary is very good. You had the emergence of Adrian Carter, their running back, has done a, done a magnificent job. I mean, like, noticed him on media day, you know what I mean, how um, Gary Teasley and his crew were talking high about um, Adrian Carter and how he's going to have a huge year along with um, Reggie Harris, the quarterback. I just think that um, Southfield's done very, very well in these last few weeks, and especially – because you, you know that they're gonna they're gonna be hard to throw on, and you know that they're gonna be hard to um, basically compete against when you look at them. But one of the shockers was Warren De La Salle, the opponent for Southfield this week. I mean, like they just went and beat Birmingham Brother Rice, and they beat them twenty six fourteen. That was one of the um, top shockers in the state. Um, when you look at Birmingham Brother Rice, I mean, they had a lot of expectations. Alex Malzone. Of course, going to Michigan, they had a very good wide receiver, Grant Perry. Um, of course, Perry ended up, Perry ended, uh, they won 26 four, 21 correction. That was the score. I mean, like, they um, saw Warren D. saw how to do a pick, had to pick one off in the final stretches of that game. 
over in Berkeley. That was one of the shockers, I thought, when, um, when, um, I mean, that second half, I mean, when you look at that game, Birmingham Brother Rice really just controlled the first half, and then, and then, um, and then when they, um, and then Warren DSL took over, I mean, like, it didn't surprise me, really, with the Catholic League, um, in that game, when, um, Warren DSL lost at Wayne State to Birmingham Brother Rice, especially on a Hail Mary path that it took to win that game, um, but what, when you look at when you look at the seat when you look when you beat a team that's won thirty four straight games like Birmingham Brother Ice, it's hard to do because you know that team, you know that team very well. You know that that um, you know what they have. I mean, like you know, you play them once in the Catholic League. You know, you're playing teams like Orchard Lake St. Mary's, Novi Detroit Catholic Central in there, and it's gonna be an interesting matchup for Southfield. Mashing up with Warren DSL, you know what I mean. Another noticeable winning streak snapped, of course, almost snapped with Ithaca. Ithaca almost lost to um Madison Heights Madison over the weekend, and that was almost shocking because Madison was up by two, up by eight points late in that game on Ithaca, and Ithaca had to score a touchdown and a two point conversion late, and then they scored again to win that game to beat Madison, and that was that was mind boggling right there. But back to Warren D. LaSalle and Southfield. I mean, this is a unique matchup. I'm kind of surprised where the location of this game's at, especially being at Novi, because, like, I was... When I look at the geographical location of this game, I was kind of surprised that um, a lot of people consider Wayne State a possible destination. Um, of course, um, Jeff Korn of the D-Zone, of course, he he thought mentioned that... Um, Wayne State was a possibility, and I'll, and I'll admit it, it was, a, it was a possibility that those teams would play at Wayne State. But the problem that I think happened in that one was, um, you know, Warren DSL, they played their home games this season at Wayne State, so I think that, that kind of took the option out of that occasion. Um, you know, I'm kind of surprised that Detroit Cast Tech and Celine are playing each other at Troy Athens, you know what I mean? That is a huge advantage for Detroit Cast Tech right there in that one. Um... When looking at that matchup, um, and then of course got Mona Shores and Harrison. Of course, they're playing at Howell. Um, Howell, you know, it's an interesting place there. I think it's a good destination place for, for both those teams. I think it makes a lot of sense to pop to play that game at um at Howell. I mean, like, but the game at the Warren D. South South again at Novi, I think makes no sense at all. I mean, like, because like um, because you're asking Warren D. South. And you're basically asking those two teams, Warren D. is going to have a farther trip in that matchup when you look at it from that perspective. And um, the other matchup we're going to mention here is, um, of course, Clarkston, East Kentwood. Of course, the Wolves. This is a unique team. Clarkston's had to survive. I mean, like, I, I'm probably going to say it right now, I think this has been a tougher road for Clarkston this year than it was last year. Because you look at those teams in the... West side of the state that year, they were not very good. Um, and I look at this year's this year's cloud of wolves. Um, they had to play Lapeer. I thought Lapeer played them as tough as they could, even though Clarkson had survived that game. Had it not been for D DJ Zazula first down running the ball, I don't think Clarkson wins that game over there against them. Warren D against them Lapeer, and then. Of course, Clarkson, of course, they won the first round game against Oxford. They blew him out convincingly in that one. And then, um, and then of course, the Lapeer game. And then the um, last week when they played Wall Lake Central, you know, I was surprised. I was kind of shocked that um, that DJ Zazula would go nuts running the ball on him. And they put 40 points against um, Wall Lake Central. Wall Lake Central was supposed to be one of the best teams in the um, Kensington. And yet, Clarkson made him look like Sad puppies. Now, could you just imagine for Clarkson that they would have played West Bloomfield? If Clarkson would have played West Bloomfield, I think they lose that game. I think they lose that game, you know, when you look at that matchup. I mean, like, when they play a game like East Kentwood, East Kentwood's the um, co-Ottawa Kent, Ottawa Kent Red um, division champions. They shared that with Rockford. Rockford's out of the playoffs. Hudson Bell beat them in the district final. I mean, like, in East Kentwood, of course, this is a team that their only loss of the year was to um, Greenville. And when Greenville just beat, it was a close game with them. And um, East Kentwood's got a ferocious defense. I mean, there's no, I think they're going to give Clarkson a lot of problems. 
You know, but, you know, when I look at Clark, a lot of people are going to say it's going to be Clarkson, Detroit, Cass, Tech in the state final. I'm not real sure. I'm, gonna, I'm not real sure to say if it is going to be them right now. Because when I look at that game with Detroit, Cass, Tech, and Celine, I mean, like, I mean, like, last week, Mike Weaver had the run for 400 yards against Chippewa Valley. Chippewa Valley's not a, um, they're not a good defense, but, but they, um, but Weaver had a heck of a game against that big red defense, and, um, you look at that matchup, no doubt, I mean, like, with Detroit Cass Tech and Celine, I mean, like, I just think with the experience that Detroit Cass Tech has, but the problem with the technicians is their running ability. I mean, now well, their passing ability, because Ronnie Hall, you know what I mean, he's a good quarterback, he, and he's going to be a good quarterback over there at Detroit Cass Tech. But I don't know if he's no J. Rue Campbell. You know what I mean? He's not when he's throwing the ball. Campbell can throw the ball all over the place. You know what I mean? But, you know, he threw, unfortunately for Campbell, he threw away his career, basically. And it's unfortunate right there for that situation. But on the other side of the match, got East Kent with Clarkson. Let's go back to that matchup. Clarkson's got a very dangerous running game. You know, they got a very dangerous running game in Nolan Erickson and Centrus Williams. Nolan Erickson's kind of taken over that um, starting role from Centrus Williams. And um, he's had a heck of a he's had a heck of a playoffs. You know what I mean? This is going to definitely help him, especially in the next year when he's a senior. He's going to have to carry the load next year because you know Clarkson replaces quarterback. They're going to have a good wide receiver back. I know for sure next year they got a good tight end coming in. Their JV team was all right. They were solid, but um, that week one game against Macomb Dakota is going to be really really tough for him next year. And then of course you know they got that twenty five game winning streak. You know what I mean? Clarkson's riding, and that's going to be a huge, huge matchup right there. When you look at East Kentwood, the Falcons, are, they're not a bad team. They, their defense is good. They can score points quick. I mean, like, this is a good – Clarkson better be careful in this matchup with East Kentwood. Now, the game's at Brighton. This game, I think, it truly favors Clarkson because when you look at – when you look at the lack of – when you look at the travel, you know – East Kentwood's got to go all the way from Kentwood near Grand Rapids to Lansing, and then they go to um, and then they go in the Brighton. You know what I mean? That's that's a ride down six not, now nine ninety six. And um, Clarkson for their route, they can just go, you know, they could just take M fifty nine basically there, and Clarkson will be at Brighton. You know, and um, in that matchup, it's it's going to be a, it's a good it's a good, a good clash of styles when you look at them. All three, when you look at that matchup right there, you know, the thing thing I look at, of course, the, um, the team I think has got the best chance to go on the forward field. You know, a lot of people say it's Clarkson. A lot of people are going to say it. I think the best team that's got the best chance to go to the forward field out of this three group is Southfield. Because Southfield, you know, I think Warren D. is a good matchup for him. Even though Warren D. is has got a very good quarterback. You know, they got, I mean, like, it's going to be a tough matchup for Southfield, but I think Southfield, out of my, in my opinion, I think got the best best chance because I don't think Warren DSL is that impressive. You know, I mean, if it was Birmingham Brother Rice, I would say, you know, Clarkson has a better role. But Clarkson, of course, playing East Kentwood, Kentwood's not a bad team. I mean, I think they're going to give Clarkson everything it can handle, but I don't know if I see Clarkson going to Ford Field. For a second time, it, it, it's possible still for Clarkson to go to Ford Field. I think Harrison's got the toughest match of them all here out of the three teams with Muskegon Mona Shores, especially with not having Javon Shaw. And, of course, your offense is limited in any way in that matchup. I mean, like, you're going to have to rely on your defense to win you those games. And I don't know if Harrison has the firepower against Muskegon Mona Shores, especially with how Mo Muskegon, especially how the, um, the Sailors can score in so many different facet aspects. And that is a bad, bad match for Harrison. I mean, like, John Harrington's had a heck of a season. You know, he's had a heck of a season. You know, but I think when you look at it here, there's a lot of parity in the white this year. You know, also the OK Black is also a good league, too. So it's really a clash at how, of, um, how the divisions are, how the league sets up. And then, of course... You got East Kentwood Clarks, and that's about a West Side versus East Side game. I think that one's going to be interesting there. And you got Warren D. of South Southfield. This is a unique matchup right there. Of course, history wise, Warren D. of South 2 0 against Southfield. When you look at it, they won in 06. 
and um oh and oh seven um they beat Southfield pretty handily in those in those two games. My projections for the week here, and when I look at these games here, the game at Howell, of course, you got Muskegon Motor Shores and Harrison. Um, and that one, I got to take Muskegon Motor Shores. Unfortunately, um, it's a bad match for Harrison. It's a tough matchup for the Hawks. I mean, like Motor Shores has got a solid defense. Their their crew is very very talented, very very good. I mean, like it's. And Harrison, of course, I think this is the game where they're going to miss Javon Shaw the most. You know, I think um, Javon Curry's going to have a huge game in this one. But I just think in the end it's going to be too much, too much Muskegon Mona Shores. And I think Muskegon Mona Shores is going to be the team, unfortunately, that goes to Ford Field for um for the first side. You know, I wish it would be a Harrison Southfield matchup in the state final. That would be that would be actually be pretty cool if that happened. But I just don't think that um. Harrison's got enough firepower, and even their defense, they're solid, but I just don't think they have enough for Muskegon Mona Shores. Next matchup here we're going to mention here is, um, of course, it's Warren DSL and Southfield. Of course, Warren DSL coming off an emotional win over Birmingham Brother Rice. I'm kind of worried about a letdown here in this matchup for the um, Pilots. Um, they just came off an emotional win against um, against their arch rival, against a team. They snapped the 34-game winning streak of the Warriors. For me and Brother Rice, this is the first time they're not going to win the state title for the first time in four years. You know, here's Southfield. Here's the Blue Jays. Nobody is talking about Southfield. You know what I mean? How they're state power. You know what I mean? Nobody's talking about Southfield. I mean, the Jays, I think, they're, they're probably the most disrespected team I've probably seen in a long time. Because no, because a lot of people are saying that Warren the Sal, I mean, like, they're going to be in the state final forward field. Do I think it's going to happen? Uh-uh-uh. I like Southfield in this matchup because here's why. Because the Jays have a running game and Adrian Carter. I also like that their secondary is loaded. That they can do they can pick you up some passes. They can do some very they can do some da- some in some experimenting things. I mean like Southfield's a unique Southfield's got a very, very they're talented defensively. They don't give a lot of points. This is gonna be a very and their defense has shown up in the in the state playoffs, and that's a good thing. That's a good omen right there. When you look at it, I like Southfield in this matchup over Warren DSL at Novi because I think because their defense is talented, and I also think the emotional letdown of Warren DSL is going to play a huge factor in that matchup. And the last matchup here we're going to mention is in Division One. You got East Kentwood Clarkston. Of course, it's a um, of course it's basically going to be like it's going to be like a home field and atmosphere I think for Clarkston. But you know, East Kentwood's had a history of bringing a lot of fans over from. The west side of the state, of course. 2012, of course, um, we all remember when Rockford took on Clarkston. Um, that Rockford basically brought the whole town from from the um, from Rockford all the way out to Clarkston, and um, that was just stunning to see. And then like the Rams beat the Wolves. I mean, like I'm not sure how um if if um East Kent was going to focus on getting the playbook of them from Ralph Munger and how to beat Clarkson because Rockford was the last team that beat Clarkson and they've won 25 straight games after that. When I look at that matchup here, I really look at East Kentwood, um, their size, their strength against Clarkson. Of course, Clarkson got DJ Zazula. Of course, they got experience in there. You know, I'm not being honest with you. Um, a lot of people are saying this is a toss up, you know, but, um, you know, Lake Orion fans, you're probably not going to like me about this here, but, um, I'm going to go with Clarkston here going to Ford Field for the second straight year because you look at the Wolves, they got a wide receiver threat. Their offense is loaded. I mean, I'm not throwing their defense. I think this is going to be a shootout when I look at this one here. I'm going to say Clarkston wins that one. I'm going to say I'm going to say 35 to um 28. I'm going to say Clarkston wins that one and goes to Ford Field for the second straight year. And you know, it's going to make Orion fans sick, but um you know, of course, Orion is one and one at um Ford F- is one and one at Ford Field. You know, Clarkson will probably go. I think Clarkson will be a very interesting matchup. It could be seen at Clarkson and Troy Cass Tech State Final. You know what I mean? On uh, Thanksgiving weekend, so that'll be an interesting matchup right there when you look at it here from that matchup. All right, now when we come back here, we're gonna talk um OA volleyball. Of course, um recapping the final two um two um OA teams, Birmingham Seaholm and Clarkston. Of course, on after losing regional finals here on OA now. Whew. 
Welcome back to Oi Now. I'm Sammy Tamina, blogger of the Dragon's Den. I want to host between Terminas on Oi Neighborhood Television. Still snowing here, it looks like, around here in the Lake Orion area. No doubt, Um, of course, the west side of the state, like around like Lansing, west of Grand Rapids, they're under winter storm warnings. You know, stay safe on the roads, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, there on those. So we're going to recap the regionals from volleyball. Um, of course, we had two regional, we had, we had four teams coming in to the regional um. Part of the draw, you had um, Troy and Clarkston, you had um, and then you had um, Birmingham Sea Home, Birmingham Grove, I mean, Beverly Hills, Lily Groves. I mean, like, when I look at the first matchup there with Sea Home and Groves, that really was not a matchup at all. I mean, I mean, Sea Home's biggest win was Birmingham Marion on uh, Birmingham Marion's home court. I mean, that matchup to me was one of the most impressive that I've seen Sea Home play all year. I mean, this is an experienced team. They're a good team that they they balance it out. You know what I mean? You got to give props to those girls for winning that type of game last week. And then, um, you know, and then, of course, they take on Groves. Of course, Groves, I thought they were in a really soft district over there at, um, over there. But you got, but, um, Berkeley's still a good team there. And then you had Royal Oak, I thought, gave them a really good game there. But, um. With them, Groves, you knew that they were going to be a tough matchup for Seahome. I mean, like, they're going to be a tough match for Seahome because Seahome, better team, I thought. But I thought they were well coached in that matchup. I just think Seahome actually played better volleyball in that matchup than Groves. And, you know, they came out, deserved that win in the regional um, semifinal over Groves. And, um, you know, and they deserved to go in that matchup with Farm Tales Mercy, who um, easily destroyed them. Um, Livonia Churchill in three games. I mean, like, Mercy, Andrew Vogel's done a very, very good job with that team over there in that one. And then, of course, he had that regional final in which that that could have went either way in that one um, with Seahome. I mean, like, they lost a tough one in four games to Farm to Nose Mercy. Um, when you look at Seahome, I mean, like, um, the Maples, they had a heck of a season. You know, a lot of people were – we're remembering that team that went to the state quarterfinals. I mean, like, um, when you look at the, when they had um, Aaron Nugentfeld, Paige Nugentfeld, I mean, like, um, you know, that, that team was very, very special for, um, that team was very special for Heather Lippert and her crew. I mean, like, I mean, like, Farmdale's Mercy is a very good team. I mean, I'm a little surprised that that game didn't go five. I was kind of disappointed it didn't go five. But you got to give credit to um, where credit's due. Um, to um, Farm Tino's Mercy. Now they're going to be in the regional final hosting. They're going to be in the regional final going up against Romeo. You know, so, I mean, like, it is what it is there. I mean, like, the Seahomes had a heck of a season, you know. And and, it, and then, you know, there's you can't fault the players for that. You know, you can't fault the players. Sometimes it's a tough circumstance right there in that matchup for um, Seahome. And it is an unfortunate, it's very unfortunate when you look at and that one from Birmingham Sea Home, you know what I mean? Because they've had a heck of a season, you know, a lot of expectation, of course. Um, early in the year, of course, um, the Dragons Den here, of course, my blog. Um, I ranked Sea Home, actually ranked number one in the Den because of their experience and their talent. You know, Sea Home, I mean, like, they're still going to be very good next year. I mean, there's no doubt they're still going to be good. I mean, like, but um, this is a tough loss for them to sh swallow when they, they played a good Farm Tales Mercy team. And it is what it is when you play in that type of game, when you play volleyball. It's hard It's hard to win, you know what I mean? It's even harder to lose. You know, and of course, when I look at, speaking of teams that had a tough tough couple weeks, of course, you had Clarkston, of course. Clarkston's team that's riding high, of course. There, a lot of people are going to say that big win for Clarkston was the Lake Orion matchup on the road. And heck, you know, it's been two weeks, you know, I'm thinking about, I'm still thinking about what happened in that game. Because... What in the blue blazes happened to Dragons in that one against Clarkson? I have no idea. But, um, you know, it is what it is when you look at it there. Um, Clarkson took on Troy. Troy, very good team under Vince Muscat. Um, they won their district. I was so shocked how they won it. You know what I mean? With Troy beating Avondale, of course, and then beating Troy Athens in five games. And now they earned they earned that chance of playing in the um, – at Troy Athens, taking on um, Clarkston. Clarkston's a very was a very good team under Kelly Avril Pinner. Um, of course, you had Taylor Dillinger there. You had um, you had a um, Madison Barrera there. Um, you know, and of course, you had Abby Manowski and Aaron Manowski. Um, 
Those two girls are very solid as well. But Abby Manowski next year is going to be a sophomore, and she's going to be the real deal, I think, in my mind. Um, you know, but um, but back to the game, I thought Romeo, I know I thought um Clarkston just dominated Troy in that game. It was a tough match for the Colts, no doubt. When you look at that game, um, Clark's Troy really had no answers for Dillinger. You know, what I mean, not a lot of people had answers for Dillinger in this tournament. When you look at, I mean, I'm not even gonna say even Lake Orion had no answer for Dillinger in that matchup in the district final, um, right there. And then of course they played in that district final against Romeo. Of course, Romeo, very very good team. They got Gia Manila, of course, who's going to go to Maryland next year. No, she's a junior. Ne she's a junior this year. She's gonna be a senior next year, and then she's gonna go play her volleyball career, continue it over at Maryland. Maryland, a Big Ten school, of course. Um, when I look at Maryland and volleyball, I mean, like, I'm not, you know, when they were in the ACC, I mean, even um, I thought Maryland was not very, very good in the ACC. You know what I mean? I mean, when I think about the ACC. You got to think about um, you got to think about usually the ACC is always surrounded around like North Carolina. You got North Carolina State, Florida State, Georgia Tech in there, but I never really thought Maryland was much of an ACC power, you know what I mean? But Maryland, interesting team, um, and they're going to get a very very special player in MG Manila um, next year. I mean, like um, in two years, she's a junior this year. She's going to be a senior next year. You know, Romeo's still going to be a very good team next year, of course. And Clarkson, you know, they were senior laying a little bit because they had that senior backcourt. They had a really good, um, of course, he had Dillinger in the outside. He had Manowski in the, um, I was kind of surprised in that matchup that, um, Romeo just went and just dominated Clarkson. I mean, like, it was, a, I mean, there were two of those games that I thought were just completely, I was impressed with, um, Romeo, especially with how they just dominated Clarkson in that, um, process. And, you know, I still could not believe that the Wolves got, got beat by Romeo. I mean, the Bulldogs, they're not a bad team. You know what I mean? You know, they're not a bad team. I mean, when you look at Romeo, but um, but I was kind of surprised with the outcome of those two games, especially. Well, and also in back to Seaholm, in the Seaholm game, I was kind of surprised in that Mercy game that um, that two of those games were 25-14. And I'm going to myself, what? 25-14? Are you kidding me? I mean, like, um, I mean, like, these two teams are better than that. You know what I mean? You know, and also Clarkson lost by the same score to Romeo. You know what I mean? 25-14. I thought that, um, you know, what? I don't know what happened in that matchup, you know what I mean, in both those two games. But I, it looked like that at Farm Tales, Mercy and Romeo, I thought were the better teams that night. And it's unfortunate for both those teams. And for Clarkson, it's, for Clarkson, it's their third regional loss in um. Ever since the loss in 2000, and um, it's their third regional loss in four years. Of course, 2011, they went to the um, state semifinals. Of course, we all know who beat them there. I mean, like, I mean, like, and um, in Battle Creek, it was Lake Orion. Um, but um, but with Romeo, you know, but with the loss, the third regional final loss in four years, it's a tough situation for Clarkston to think about. You know, you're going to lose a lot of talent next year. Of course, Taylor Dillinger, just recently, she's going to be playing, continuing her volleyball career at Western Kentucky. Um, the, she's going to be a hilltopper, of course. The um, Western Kentucky, part of that Sunbelt Conference, um, you know, they're going to be all right. I mean, like... Um, you know, but I think they're going to get a good, good talent in Taylor Dillinger, what she brings. Of course, she did play a little bit when she was in Alabama, um, in Huntsville, near Huntsville. I mean, like, um, so, you know, she's going to be on to um, in the college, and she'll be getting ready to play her college volleyball over at, um, over in, over at Western Kentucky. Of course, Bobby Vitrino used to coach there at, at um, Western Kentucky before, um, taking the um, head football job over at Louisville. So, that's an interesting um gig right there, you know what I mean for um for for being a hilltopper, of course, um very unique situation right there. Okay, recap the OA volleyball season, of course. Um, when you look at it here, the OA, of course, um, this is of course the regional final was the um was the um last um of the two OA teams, Seaholm and um Clarkson. They were both knocked out in that side of the draw. Um, it's an unfortunate situation when you look at um the Maples, you know what I mean, that they've, um, 
And the, I mean, the Maples have had a heck of a season, I thought. You know what I mean? Clarkston, of course, it was a surprise, you know what I mean? To see that, you know, no, not a lot of people thought highly of Clarkston. You know, I didn't think highly of Clarkston early in the year. I didn't think highly of Warren either, you know, but I was kind of surprised that um, they re- both teams rebound, had a really nice season. Um, you know, I was kind of surprised. My biggest disappointment, I thought, this year was Royal Oak because, you know, I thought the Ravens would have more chemistry, you know what I mean? It looked like over there that they didn't have a lot of chemistry over there all season long, and, and it ended up costing them in the pre-district and their loss to Beverly Hills Willie Groves in that matchup. And, you know, a couple games, also another disappointment, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to be honest with Lake Orion because, you know, I didn't expect the Dragons to lose in um, three games to Clarkson on your home field. That, on your home court, that's just bad enough when you look at that situation into that into that part of the um scenario right there. Um, when I look at the league next year, when I look at them, it would not surprise me if there's going to be some changes um in the league. Um, I still think when you look at it, no doubt. Um, I still think you know you're gonna in the red, you're gonna have to deal with the big three. Um, you're gonna deal with Orion, Clarkston. See home. I think those are the three um best teams in there. Stony Creek, I think, is the fourth best team in there. Um, can't count out Oxford, Troy. I mean, like Troy is gonna be very good. They had a good JV team last year. This year, I mean, like when you look at, it, I still think, I think Troy's gonna make some noise next year. You know, but I think really in the red, you look at Orion, Clarkston, and Stony Creek. I think are the three top teams right now in that division. And then in the white, <coughs> you know, you got them. I still think for some reason I think Adams will be better, you know, but also you got Troy Athens still going to be very good. You got Christine Stainchuk, her crew, of course, they're led by Dakota Stainchuk, who's going to be back even though they lose some very key pieces. I still think Troy Athens is going to be one of the favorites there in that division. And, of course, in the blue, you got um, Avondale loses a lot. You know, I think they're going to struggle next year. I know they're getting a new coach. I know Roseberry um, is going to be gone over there. I've been hearing rumors over there at Avondale. And, um, you know, and then um, also I think the um favorite in that league is going to be um, I still think watch out for Oak Park and um, Oak Park's gonna be a good team to watch. I think the Knights are gonna be, they're gonna be a good team. I think next year, and then you got Royal Oak, who's gonna be, who's gonna be right there. I think you know they just had a really rough year, chemistry wise, and I think they struggled into that role last year, no doubt. When you look at the league, so um. This concludes the Unbuyable season here for OA now. And um, when we come back, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk boys basketball. Of course, tryouts are tryouts. They're trying out right now here on OA now. Welcome back to Ori Now. I'm Sammy Termina, blogger of the Dragons Den, and one of the hosts of Between Terminas on Ori Neighborhood Television. Of course, I'd like to thank on TV for um, producing producing Ori Now. Of course, it is snowing as we speak here at the um, studio, so um, it's a huge, it's an interesting scenario right here. Of course, um, of course, um, make sure you stay safe and wear jackets, everybody. Okay, and then um, we're gonna go to to a sport where um, it has a lot of warmth, and that's basketball season. Boys tryouts are a lot of boy sports trying out today. You got wrestling trying out. You got boy swimming trying out. You got um, you know, of course, of course we got a and got powerlifting trying out. I mean, like, but the main sport we're going to talk about today is boys basketball. Of course, um, my early projections, you know what I mean. But we got some, we got some breaking news out of Pontiac. Of course, um, Pontiac, of course. Replacing a legend over there at, at Phoenix Country is going to be very – it's always hard. It is. You know, and then here's a guy you enter in 
in Ben Kelso coming over from Waterford Kettering. Of course, he's coached three different state championship teams. He coached at um, Detroit Cooley. Um, he coached at Southfield. You know, so he knows the area pretty well. And he's won some champion. He's got three state titles, so he's got rings to look at. And he's going to bring an intensity to Pontiac, whereas um, something they may be lacking over there. But, you know, it's an unfortunate situation over there when um, you're replacing an icon. It's hard to replace a coach like Robert Rogers, who um, who who's won a state championship when he was at Pontiac Northern. I mean, like, he replacing an icon, that's hard to do, you know what I mean, when you look at it. And here's Ben Kelso, of course, he used to play basketball, of course. Um, he's one of the, he used to be a former Piston, I think. And, um, you know, last year he coached at Waterford Kettering, of course. Um, he made the captains into one of the most defensive, best defensive teams at the, in the state, and in the, in the league. They were, I think they were one of the best defensive teams in the um, league last year when you look at how they um, – did their stats now? Um, now looking at how they played last year, of course, Kettering and Pontiac are two different teams. But Waterford, when Kelso was there at Waterford Kettering, Kettering played a boring style of basketball. You know, it means it was a slow, methodical type style of play in which, um, you look at what Kelso is going to try to bring over there to Pontiac. He's going to bring the defensive intensity. Of course, Pontiac also is known for their speed, athleticism. Of course, basketball over there at Pontiac is basically life over there. And you're in a division. You move down from the red to the white. You know what I mean? But look at what they look at what how it does to the OA White. Because now you got four coaches, five. Actually, five, I mean, you got all the coaches are very, very good coaches. You got them. Um, Dave Scott at Troy Athens. You got Gary Fralick at Troy. You got Brian Tipton at Oak Park. You got them. Um, John Pleasant at um at Rochester, and then you got um you got Tom Reese at Lake Orion. I mean, like those are five coaches have had some championship experience. Of course, um, Pleasant, of course, taking his team when they had James Young in 2010. Of course, Tom Reese took the Dragons to state quarterfinals in 2000 and um in 2012. I mean, like that correction on Rochester was 2013. Um, and then you look at um. And then you look at Dave Scott, who's proven, who's won two district championships over at um, over at Troy Athens, of course. Um, they were co-league champions last two straight years. Gary Frouk's always good, always a good coach over there. You know the Whites got some balance. You know what I mean when it comes to coaching, coaching over there. But when you look at the um league this year, early see early on, I mean like it's gonna be interesting. You know, <laughs> when you look at them, um, there's a lot of expectations around. You know what I mean. Of course, the OA blue, the OA, of course, this year decided to go more of a um, traditional. I mean, like four six group. Of course, um, we all know. Um, of course, the last team to make a deep playoff run in the OA, of course, was Rochester, making that deep run when they had James Young. You know, and ever since then, the OA has had um, really no no other teams gone that far. Of course, Lake Orion, we all know, went in two thousand twelve to the state quarterfinals that year. But, um, of course, you know, Clarkson went to the state semifinals a couple of years ago as well when they had that talented group over there. But um, when you look at the OA Red this year, of course, um, my early – oh, actually, take it back. Last year, Bloompia Hills, actually, correction. Apologies there for um, – apologies to, to coach um, to coach over there at um, – at um, Bloompy Hills. Bloompy Hills actually last year went to the state finals, actually, and then they lost to Muskegon. Um, you know, when you look at the Blackhawks, you know what I mean? This is a team I think is going to be a very interesting team to watch. I mean, the OAs had some very good teams. I mean, very good competitiveness. I mean, like, you got to give credit to where credit's due with the Blackhawks. They had a very experienced team last year with the Big Three. Unfortunately for the Big Three, they had um, some situ a situation in which um, – in which um, Kylie Gracie, of course, unfortunately got arrested for stealing some shoes, and um, that team really was not the same team after um, after that um, after that um, that um, season, you know. But a lot of a lot of storylines coming into the league, of course. Um, what happened at West Bloomfield, of course, with the um, UAD Jesuit situation, of course, that that was a shocker that was going on all summer long over there, you know. Now they're but at UAD. You know, and West Bloomfield was 
basically left out to dry in that situation. And then, of course, you got him. Um, of course, you got Jerome Buda Rogers. Of course, he committed this week to Cleveland State. I mean, it's an interesting decision right there. I thought he would have went a little bit, a little more bigger. I thought, you know, over um, he could have went. I think maybe to a Big Ten school. Maybe I was surprised that you thought you decided to stay in the Horizon League. I mean, like um, you know, that was a stunner right there. Of course, he can be dealing with Oakland at least a couple times this year, along with Detroit Mercy as well in that one. But when I look at the early favorites, um, in the OA Red. Um, I would probably have to say North Farmington would be the early favorite because I think the rate they got a lot back. North Farmington does. Um, they're talented, you know. And then of course, um, and then of course the next team here I would mention is Clarkston. Of course, the Wolves. They just got Foster Laner. Um, you know, John Laner's um used to be the coach at the um, at the um, Detroit Pistons. Of course, his son actually stayed at Clarkston. Of course, he wanted him to play for Fife. He's only a freshman. He's gonna be a guard this year when you look at it. Then you got um, my you got Andrew Myers. You got Myers is gonna be a good player. And then you got um Throgmorton. Of course, you're three. You got Chewings is your five, of course. But when you look at Clarkson, I mean, like the depth could be a problem a little bit over there. And you got Mira Canada, you know, who's gonna probably be an undersized four. But besides those five, you know what I mean? They don't really have a lot to go to. You know what I mean? When you look at those five, I think that's gonna be a huge problem for Dan Fife and his Wolves is gonna probably be that bench. You know, because when you look at Clarkson, of course, their five, I think their starting five is going to be a very, very dangerous team this year. I mean, when you look at it, when you look at the Wolves. And, of course, another team to mention here is Southfield, the Blue Jays. You know, the Blue Jays, very unique team, big team. They got two very good guards. I mean, Southfield's a team, you know, but I'm kind of worried about that playoff run that there are. And, you know, there may be some guys that still play basketball over there. You know, but um, it's a curious situation over there. But um, South is going to be very good this year. I expect them to do well. Next team here is Bloomfield Hills. Of course, the Blackhawks. Of course, they went to state finals last year. Had a heck of a year for um, heck of a year last year for Bloomfield Hills. And um, for Dwayne Graves, you know what I mean? For um, his staff, you know what I mean? For what, um, for what, he, um, for what he did over there at Bloomfield Hills. It's been basically incredible. Of course, I know my good friend Gary Parker. It's on that staff over there at Bloomby Hills. You know, they're going to have a down. I think they're going to have a little bit of struggle this year. They don't really have the interior guy, I think, that's going to give them. They're going to rely a lot on shooting, I just think, over there for Bloomby Hills. I mean, like, these are my early projections. I'll give you my official projections on the Drag to Stem blog. Or also, when I am, um, when we do our pot, when I do my podcast in a couple weeks, we're going to go over girls' basketball projections and boys' basketball predictions. We'll predict each division. And also will predict um, um how um how the season's gonna go, especially when it comes to scheduling and rankings to start the year. There, next team mentioned is gonna be the Highlanders of Rochester. Adams, of course, Adams lost to Kemj Williams a year ago. Um, Adams lost. I mean, like um they got they got a couple guys back. They got Nectar back, and then they got um Littleson coming in. You know, Littleson had a heck of a year last year. Spencer Littleson, he's gonna be a good player here. I think him and Necker are gonna be two are gonna be are going to be two of those top players, I think, in the um, league in which they're going to carry the load this year, no doubt, when you look at Adams in that division. Um, next team we're going to mention here, of course, is Southfield Lathrop. The Chargers, I don't know much about this team as I first think, but, um, but you know, but I was a little surprised at the meetings that they that they kept Southfield Lathrop in the red, um, you know, but... um. I was kind of surprised there. I just think they're going to struggle. I still think Oak Park would have made a better team in that division, you know what I mean, than Lathrop. But it is what it is. And um, Safi Lathrop's got a very good player coming in. Um, but we'll see what happens over there when it comes to the Chargers over there, no doubt. I mean, then we're going to go to the White. Of course, you got um, Oak Park. Brian Tipton's done a very good job. But out is Rodney Scales. You got Kevon Fuller back, you know. They did bring in a couple transfers by them. I don't think they're going to play the year. If they play the year, I'd be really upset, disappointed about that. But um, but when you look at Oak Park, I mean the Knights are um, they're going to be a good team this year. They got an emerging sophomore. I think it's going to be very, very good if he's up on varsity. If he's up on varsity, Oak Park's the real deal. <coughs> Next team coming up here is um, you got Troy Athens, the Red Hawks. Very good. Well, they're a stale team. You know they got um. 
Tim Shakoya, of course, is playing the um, like a guard slash forward. They don't they lose Mike Williams from a season ago, but they do have Corbin Bellage and John Van Hoff, um, the two bigs inside. Their problem, I think, this year is going to be depth inside and also their depth at the guards. I think that's going to be a huge problem for Troy Athens this year. That's going to be a tough chore, especially when you got Oak Park in there. You got Troy, you got Orion, Pontiac. You know what I mean? This to deal with in that division, it's going to be tough right there. Um, next team to mention is Troy. Colts, very scrappy, very pesky. I mean, like Gary Frack loves that type of style of basketball. They're scrappy. I mean, this is this is a good thing. You know, I mean, Troy's going to be a very interesting team to watch this year, especially there in that situation. I think Troy's going to be a team to watch. And the next team here is the, is the Dragons, Blake Gorey, and, of course, Tom Reese. Um, they, lose, they lose a lot from a year ago. They're going to rely a lot on their um, – Guards, you know, the question is going to be their bigs inside. Um, I think the Dragons, they could have a solid year. The schedule to start off the year is absolutely brutal to start off. They got to play Oxford first game at home. Then they got to go to Adams. And then they got to play Southfield, Clarkston, and Bloomfield Hills. Those three games are going to be very tough. It wouldn't surprise me this team starts on 1-5, you know, to start the year there. And then the next team we're going to mention is Pony and Phoenix, of course. Ben Kelso bringing in that energy. He's going to bring in his new coach, of course. Um, we'll see what he does over there, no doubt, at Pontiac. I mean, like, and, of course, um, the next team here is the Rochester Falcons. you got John Pleasant, his team. It's going to be tough for them over there, no doubt, when you look at Big Blue. Um, Rochester could struggle this year when you look at um, the talent that they have back. Of course, you know, they're struggling after losing James Young the last two years. They were awful last year in the red, and now they're up down the white, so... It's going to be a tough situation, I think, over there at Rochester when you look at it. Of course, um, next we're going to go to the OA Blue. Um, the Blue, you know, that's a tough division. It's a good division when you look at the OA Blue. Um, when you look at when you look at that division, you know, early favorite would probably be West Bloomfield because they got Tristan Jackson, Michael King. you got Coach Jeremy Dana who's going to, um, you know, see what happens this year with those two guys. And you got Zach Allred, who I think is a – very underrated center in the state. Um, you know, I think West Bloomfield's got the tools to make a to make a state run. They got the depth to do it. They're deep, they're talented, and I just think that the Lakers, you know, are going to be a team to watch in the blue this year. Next team we're going to mention, of course, the Oxford Wildcats. Very good team for Stephon Henning this year. Of course, you got um the tr the arrival of Mason Virus, the transfer from Clarkston, to go along with their already loaded front court. You got Devin Alexander, good um. Power forward, and then you got um Connor Elzerman, of course, three point shooter, who can no doubt um go inside out, and then you got a three, and then of course you got Connor Bandell, who's a three point shooter from the five position. Oxford's gonna be a very talented group this year, no doubt. When you look at the Wildcats, this is a team I think to be a very dangerous team to be a reckon with. Next team we're gonna mention here is Groves, of course, the Falcons' new coach over there, of course um. Curious, he's got a nice team, got a nice blend of players, but I don't know if it's going to be possible in that league with the league, how tough it is, you know. But I just think Groves, you know what I mean? They got some questions, but they will play hard, they will compete hard. And then, of course, the next team is Avondale, the Yellow Jackets. Avondale's an interesting team here when you look at them, what um, they've done. They've done a nice job building that team back up. I think Avondale's on the rise up. Right now, when you look at how they've been doing, they got a good guard back. They got, they're not going to be a bad team. I mean, like, I think Scott Morton's going to be a very, very, he's going to have a good team this year, no doubt, for this Al Avondale team heading into the year. Um, next team here we're going to mention here in the blue is um, Stony Creek, the Cougars. Scott Reeder, Jack Allen, very good team right there. The Cougars are going to be an interesting team to watch this year. I mean, like, they're not a bad team. When you look at it on paper, they're a hardworking team for Steve Norgrove. And um, I think Norgrove's going to have a good a good problem to have. I, it wouldn't surprise me if they push Adams for a city title this year. It would not surprise me at all. You know, when you look at when you look at them um, in that one, of course. Um, and then, of course, we're going to go to the um, gold now. Of course, um, the gold to last division, you got them. Um, and we got Ferndale, Harrison, Farmington, Berkeley. Oh, I forget Royal Oak. You know, Royal Oak. Yeah, Royal Oak's in there. You got Hazel Park in there. But um, 
I'm gonna go right now. When I look at it here, I think that um, we'll go Farmington first. Of course, Farmington Terrence Port is back over there. Of course, he's um, of course their head coach over there. Um, he's got a good team back. I mean, like I'm curious to see how he does defensively over there with Farmington. Um, see what happens over there. Um, with them, the next team here to mention is um, oh I forgot to mention Seahome. Dang, gum it, forgot to mention Seahome. Seahome in the blue. Also, I think that they got a new coach as well. I'm curious to see how the Maples do. Um, you know, this year they got a new coach. I mean, like they got some players, they got some talent, you know. But we'll see what happens there in that league, no doubt about it. And then back to the gold. Um, I mentioned Farmington already. Next team mentioned here um, is Ferndale. The Eagles, good. They have a good team. You know what I mean? They won. The, they were. They gave Farmington everything they could last year. Um, Farmington's a team. I mean, like Ferndale's gonna be a team. I think it's gonna be a peep problems this year. They do play in a bad district, though. You know, over there in District B, but I think they'll be favored there. But um, they'll, they'll surprise some people this year. Um, next team here is Royal Oak, the Ravens. Interesting team. I mean, like um, scrappy team. They play well defensively. Good team. You know what I mean? Farming. T I mean, Royal Oak's gonna be an interesting team to watch heading into the year. Of course, um, they're very scrappy. Very. Very scrappy team, you know what I mean? And, of course, you got um, Berkeley. Of course, I commend Berkeley for what they're doing. They got a murder's roll with schedule. I applaud Berkeley for that. I do applaud them. They, I mean, like, they got a murder's roll schedule, tough matchup, tough games, non-league, you know what I mean? The, the setup, they got to play West Bloomfield, Lake Orion, you know, two of those games. It's going to be a tough match. And they got to play Troy. That's going to be two, three tough matches right there for, um, for Berkeley, but... It's going to get him better, and I think it's going to help him in the long haul, especially when he gets into the postseason play in that one. And, of course, the, um, the last team we're going to mention here is the um, Hazel Park Vikings. The Vikings, you know, they, they were t competitive last year, of course. Um, you know, they were not very good last year, but they were very competitive. Um, Hazel Park, this is a team I think is going to be going to do some wonders this year. Um, I don't know if it's going to give them wins or not, but second year, for the Viking program, I think that now's the time to move up. If you're <coughs> now's the time to rise to the occasion. If you're Hazel Park, no doubt, um, it's time to rise up to the occasion. If you're a Viking, if you're a Viking player, Viking coach, you know it's time to move up and rise up to the occasion and surprise some people this year because you know, you know, you there's gonna be a time where you get sick and tired of becoming the laughing stock of the league, and um, and um. I think it's time for Hazel Park to rise up the occasion and um, basically show them that, hey, we're going to be here at Hazel Park. We're going to compete for real. Let's compete for a state title. You know what I mean? Let's compete for a championship. You know what I mean? Let's compete for a championship and start unveiling a program here in Hazel Park. Okay, now, when we, um, okay, now, these are, not, of course, once again, these are not the official basketball previews here for the um, Dragons Den. You will, you will, we will have a full live um, preview show for the um, division um for the um, boys basketball preview coming up. Um, that'll be in a couple weeks, of course. Um, you just mentioned girls basketball last week, of course. Um, we'll, have, we'll probably do the same thing for that. Of course, girls basketball is awesome on the horizon as well. So um, we'll see what happens there. I mean, like, it, of course, we still got to talk wrestling. Also, of course, coming up, got a lot of powerhouse teams in wrestling you got to deal with. You got Clarkson, Oxford, Rochester, West Bloomfield, Orion. Those type of teams in the OA, Southfield even, they can be a very, very dangerous wrestling team. Also, heading into the regular season of their of league play and also in the regular season. Okay, now I'm going to sign off here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, stay safe, you know what I mean, from the snowy roads. And also, and also, stay safe, everybody. And good luck during boys' basketball tryouts. Good night, and God bless all.